I've put a lot of dedication into my videos and their accompanying topics, more so than anyone else is Call Me Carson, who I've been researching for the past nearly two years now. This has led me down a path of discovering more about one individual, which I didn't expect to be so important to the story. Two videos ago, I made a video about Carson, which if you haven't seen it, I highly recommend you do, as it details the journey I went through when researching about Carson. Then to the discovery of Ryan P's involvement. Ryan P is the managing director behind groups such as Call Me Carson's Lunch Club, The Misfits, and Dream Team. In the video after Carson, I will continue talking about Ryan P in my next video about Dream. Where in that video, I propose an idea with evidence that Ryan may be heavily involved in that drama as well. The finale you see in the title is no mistake, as this video acts as the final part of those two videos. Both are found in the description if you wish to view them for yourself. They detail how Ryan would abuse his power over YouTubers in order to control allegations in shady ways which among many tactics included offering hush money to those who knew more about the situation. Although in today's video I will continue on in the story and detail what Ryan P has really been involved in doing first hand. As he is not only involved in sweeping grooming allegations and sexual misconduct allegations of other YouTubers and streamers under the rug, but has his own sexual misconduct allegations. This is his story. Our first impression of this drama came on the 26th of November 2022. User at Packet would make a tweet that includes a small statement on some of what was occurring with Ryan P behind the scenes. Quote, Throughout my time working with the Misfits and their merch company, I was continually put into extremely uncomfortable situations with Ryan and made to partake in sexual acts which I would only ever agree to after being coerced. Told that I would get a promotion, get to live with friends, taken on overseas trips, or made a money offer which I wasn't in the position to refuse as I was underpaid and never paid on time. I've witnessed him perv on his employees in the shower, break into clients phones to search for private photos, take a advantage of men who he has given way too much alcohol and drugs. This was the main part of the drama and sets a scene of what was really going on. We know that Ryan has a heavy influence on the people around him, which gives Ryan the possibility to control the actions of the people around him. And a notable method is by using blackmail, which is seen in how he would offer special privileges for sexual activities. Something backed up by Pickett when he says, he uses money and influence to manipulate vulnerable people into fulfilling his sexual desires, which I have mentioned in detail in my previous two videos he would also use this money for other reasons besides sexual. As according to Noah Hudbox, a former friend of Call Me Carson and former member of Lunch Club, Noah was bribed with money from Ryan to keep quiet about Carson's actions and messaging underage fans. So this tells us that Ryan had a habit of using his influence in a variety of devious and malicious ways. Pickett continues, quote, I know of many more stories that make me sick and give me nightmares to this day. It's not my place to share them, but to others with similar experiences, you are not alone. Then we'll continue in a treat under this statement by saying, To everyone that has reached out to me publicly and privately sharing your stories and giving me your support, I appreciate you all so much. Which tells us that there's been more people that have had experiences with Ryan P. The final piece of the statement and the one that might seem interesting to many of you, the misfits are aware of at least some of these actions and choose to look the other way and leave their staff and audience open to abuse. I have lost all respect for them. Having a platform is a privilege and the people that allow you to have one should be protected. So therefore, depending on how much information Misfits members were aware of, this can be very detrimental to their careers. Pickett does note that only some of this information was known by the Misfits. How much of it was known is not clear, but according to Pickett, it was enough for him to lose all respect. Pickett doesn't seem to demonize them or make the Misfits out to be maliciously hiding something, but this, if more information comes out, can be a large stain on their careers. That brings us to questioning some more things about this post. I cannot say with a large amount of confidence the extent of this drama is true. This is because Pickett has decided to not provide any evidence, although I will say other YouTubers and streamers stood with him here, such as Noah Hugbox, a large figure in these videos who time and time again has helped provide a lot of information to incriminate Ryan and other bad people. Pickett is also a very well-known figure amongst these YouTubers, so if he was spreading misinformation, it would be bizarre for them to stay silent about this. 
so it's very likely that to some extent Ryan was acting very predatory towards the staff of these organizations. And to some extent, Misfits team is not acting to help prevent this. Such as in Ryan P's LinkedIn, he is a current directing manager there despite this post being made. As for the true seriousness of the drama in the view of the Misfits, it seems it could only be a case of excusable ignorance which may be excused. As for Ryan, well, welcome to the third video on his career. <laughs> Over the series we talked about Carson. We saw Ryan steer the ship in attempting damage control and telling Carson how the best deal when the drama turned public is to deal with the least amount of damage possible. This even included coercing Carson's friends using payments of money to quote, stop talking about this. In the next video about Dream, we saw a repeat scenario where Dream's controversy kept his friends in the dark over everything in an attempt to keep them from giving giving the audience a full story on what is going on. A scenario which continues to today. And today, we saw Ryan use his power to gain sexual gratification from people. That is Ryan's biggest trait here, using his power. He used it over other YouTubers to try silence whistleblowers and save the careers of possible groomers and sexual offenders, then used his power for his own benefit. Ryan is an example of a silent figure in the community which held a huge power over those around him. And this drama should give a huge insight into the way Ryan would use his power for himself and the shady tactics found within these greedy management teams in the industry. I would like to give a huge thank you to those who stuck around to view this journey with me, and to those who liked the videos and chose to take the time out of their day to view them. You have my undying gratitude. Any updates to the drama will be reported on and documented on this channel, so please subscribe and watch as they come out. Thank you all for watching, Good night. Ryan P. Ryan P. Ryan P. Ryan P. Ryan P. Yeah, that's gonna that's gonna hook the audience. Right? That's gonna, they're gonna love that shit. They're gonna love. They're gonna eat that shit up. They're gonna love that. You they're should just put this at the end of the video. I should. Well, I just don't do that. I'll beat the fuck out of you. <laughs>